Blessed is the man that worketh not in the council of the heathen, as sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the love of the Lord, and in this Lord as he edited sunrise and sundown. Him a go day like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in this season. Him live never a go wither, and whatsoever him do shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now they saw them there like a chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the heathen them never go turn upon judgment of the sinner man them in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord God Jah never the way of the righteous and the way of the sinner man them always and always I go perish. Where two centuries meet in the name of the most I Jah at the so Jaja there. If Jaja never watch upon your house the watchman I go watch it in vain. Same way. If Jaja never build up your house the builder I go build it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and them is saved. Many are the afflictions of the righteous but Joe shall deliver him from all of them. And I give thanks and I say unto your name, King of Kings and Lord of Laws. They can carry in lion of the tribe of Judah, Amasa Yahuda, Yahuda, Amasa, Negusto, Negusto, Daniel, Am. Koma ya sataya. Aimana pio 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 aya. This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rastan. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot is seen on the fire, it means there's something sumptuous cooking. Are you ready for the sumptuousness coming out of the black pot? Are you ready to have your wildest delicacies, the most nutritious? This is the traditional African home with the black pot where we speak truth to power. Now, we call it the black pot because we put in the ingredients. And out of these ingredients, we serve you with your wildest, most nutritious delicacies. We put in the bad products, bad products, turn that out into good products and deliver that to you. This is where we speak truth to power. We normally would not criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. It's all about our people, our continent, our land. Yes, we are in the service of God and country. This is the Black Port, and we are live on Pan African TV, live on Ghana Web TV. We are also live on Loud Silence TV, and on our own TV, we are live, and that is Black Empire TV. We are live on our YouTube channel, and that is the Black Empire Media. This is the master of Pan Africanism on TV. Pan African TV. My name is Black Cluster. Now let's begin with the very first story. Now the very first story today is a culture of carelessness, wastefulness. It looks like in this country and in so many other parts of Africa, we are a very careless and a very wasteful people. We struggle to have it. There's no culture of maintenance. We grow white elephants all over the place. And then at the end of the day, we crash everything down and start running after the same things that we have crashed down. Look at the headlines. Today in history, exactly one year ago, this came out. And what is it about? Over 38 million US dollar worth of medical equipment rot away in abandoned affair military hospital. Why? Look at the story. Among the equipment rotting away were oxygen cylinders, air conditioners, generation pipelines, cables, uh, window glasses, louvers, concrete mixing machines, bungalow proofs, tiles, building stones, and heaps of sand, amongst others. 
ultra modern oxygen cylinders and medical equipment worth over 38 million American dollars are left to rot at the abandoned Aferi military hospital in the Ashanti region. The hospital is a 500 bed facility that according to media reports was expected to be completed in December 2018. However, the expectation was not met. Come along. My brother, my sister, this is the culture of wastefulness we have. We cry that we don't have it. We run around trying to get it. We get it. We put it up. And because of political expediency, political correctness, we leave it and threaten the people that if we are not voted into power, that will not be completed. And if we happen to be out of power, the new dumb government coming in will not even think about completing it. They want new projects because they think that by completing the abandoned project, the credit would all go to whoever started it. So it's not about the country anymore. It's about winning elections. It's about political expediency, political correctedness. And when you look at some of these things, my brother, my sister, we puke. 38 million American dollars. All going down. And by the kind courtesy of my colleague, Captain Smart, they brought out a video showing some of these things happening. How many people go to the hospitals and have no beds? How many people go to the hospitals and lie down on the floors? How many of you have gone to the hospitals and you have seen pregnant women eh, in labor on the floor? How many of us go to the hospitals and the doctor got so tired, he is somewhere sleeping whilst people are busily dying? What is the ratio of doctor to patient in Ghana? The last time I checked, it was one to about 1,200. In my days, it was one to 400 patients. Now it has tripled. One to 1,200 patients. In America, what is the ratio? One to four. So a doctor sees four patients on the average. Whilst in Ghana, one doctor sees 1,200 patients in a specified period. How would that doctor be able to be efficient? That is why chloroquine is prescribed still after 200 million years of chloroquine getting out of use. That is why every sickness in our hospital is malaria. Even when you go there with syphilis, is malaria. You go out there, my brother, my sister, you have stomach ache, it's malaria. Hi, hey, every sickness is malaria. My brother, my sister, the hospital is rotting away. People are dying in hospitals that have no facilities. A lot of these things were imported, but have been abandoned. Why? Who abandoned this? Why was it abandoned? When I look at some of these things, I ask myself, when are we going to grow? Sagalimi House. You all remember Sagalimi, Right? The houses have been left to rot. The houses that were meant for human beings are now accommodating bats, snakes, scorpions, lizards, house flies, uh, lizards, and grasshoppers. All kinds of lizards. Monitor lizards, agama lizards. They are all there. What kind of a country is this? Mama went and borrowed money from India. Went all the way out to build a sugar factory for political expediency. Maybe it was left to rot by the government that came in. And they were telling us stories after. What kind of a people are we? What kind of a people are we? We go out and borrow, waste it, and now struggle to pay. My brother, my sister, I am hurt. I leave it here. That shit I will let me deal with the next thing. Next thing I want to deal with, my brother, my sister, away from the culture of carelessness and wastefulness. 
I don't know what kind of people we are, my brother. It hurts me that we are so wasteful. Today we are going to spend time and talk about the Attorney General's, I beg your pardon, the Auditor General's report for 2021. Look at it. Ghost in empty graves paid millions. You look at the grave, there's no body there. Yet we pay money to the ghost that is not in the grave. Where is the ghost? Look at it. Look at it. Auditor General reports. Look at it. Finance Ministry over payment of uh, over 1 million Ghana cities to three ghosts exposed. And when you read the story, you will shiver. According to the Auditor General, the payment was contrary to Regulation 86 of the Public Financial Management Regulations 2029 LL 2378. The names of the said individuals who received the payments were given by the Auditor General as Alote Imon James. It's a ghost. doesn't exist anywhere in Jamestown. You can't find him. You go to Teshi, he's not there. You comb all over Ghana, it's not there. You go to Awudumi Cemetery, it's not there. You go to Zujung in Tamale, he's not there. Kwachi Nanayao Asiedu, another ghost. Adam Abibu, ghost. And these three ghosts were paid total amounts of how much? Watch this, watch this, watch this. As gross salaries for 12 months, one year in the case of the person and 24 months in the case of the two others. People are here working. Salaries are not coming. NAPCO workers are not being paid. Uh, uh, teachers are struggling. Nurses are crying that their salaries are what, delaying. Some people are not even paid at all. Some teachers would work for four, five, six years before their first salaries would come. Some are posted to areas where there are no schools. You are posted to a school where there's no school. Yet you are supposed to go and teach in the school that is not there. So a very creative teacher will create a school under what? A tree. And some of the students or the pupils come to school and think that they are doing you a favor. Because it's a punishment to go to school in some parts of Ghana. We don't have money to pay all these hardworking teachers. The other day we did a story of a teacher who would swim several miles to go to school in the north. And when we showed pictures of the classroom, it didn't look like a classroom. It looked like a graveyard. The walls were worse than Atakwame. The blackboard was white with expiration and old age. And you look at this and you are like, hey, what is happening? All the way in the north, around the ND area there. Today we are paying money to ghosts when living beings do not get their salaries after hard work. Three people. And that's not all. This is where Controller and Accountant General's Office paying ghosts. Finance Ministry is sitting down sleeping because the Finance Minister is sick in the head. Immigration is also suffering. Watch. And it's interesting. How many people here? Three people. Here to three ghosts. Three immigration officers swallow 99,000 Ghana cities in salaries despite resigning from service. Why? They resigned, yet they are still receiving salary. Why? And when you look at it, my brother, you want to ask yourself, what is happening to us? Are we okay? Our mothers and fathers and colleagues are breaking their backs and their salaries are delaying, they are not coming. How many of us have worked for how many months and we have not been paid? Yet the government has money to build a cathedral. The government has money to fly around aimlessly. A lot of our money is paid to ghosts in graves that do not even exist. What a country! Look at this. Look at this. GBC. One of the outmoded media houses in Ghana. GBC could have been a very strong 
media house. But a cakeness, laziness, cheating, all boxed into one. The media house has become outlandish. Colloquially outlandish. Should I go deeper? Go to G GBC. The moment you enter the yard, you will smell old age. Old things all over the place. People who are 99 years old, yet on paper they are only 27. They have dyed their hair to the point that anytime Yombo is coming to their hair, Yombo starts crying. Their beard, mustache, armpits, people care, everything is dyed. Why? If you don't retire, who is going to get there? The last time I went to GTV, it was crazy. Now they are trying to bring in some fresh limbs to try and do things. My brother, my sister, this is the place where they still sit with the paper reading news. The Minister of Agriculture and Energy and blah, blah, blah caught five butterflies who were flying around the uh, Hawaii Lagoon. And uh, 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 uh. the world has moved on, brethren. The world has moved on. There are touch screens. You go into their radio studios and you are shocked that they are still using CD players and cassette players. My brother, my sister, when you read the story, you will die. So I won't even read it because I don't want to die. Carelessness. The controller and accountant general's department is not doing its work. The finance ministry is sleeping. GBC that is already very, very, very poor. No money, nothing. It's also losing money. You lose money that you don't have. Tell me how GBC is going to be able to survive without government support. Private radio stations are even struggling now in this economic crackdown. I won't call it meltdown. Crack is cracked. There's nothing melting. Everything has become so solidified like lava that is now cracked. GBC. You don't have it. And you are losing it. My brother, my sister, when we return, we will look more into some of these things that are killing us in this country. In the interim, I have a quote for you. And this quote is about ghosts. Do we have ghosts? Who are these ghosts we are paying the monies to? Can we investigate and find out the ghosts who are receiving our money? Somebody signed and took the money. Can we find that ghost? Now immigration, those who resigned, did they take the money or somebody sat in their place and took the money? These are the ghosts we are talking about. I have a quote on monsters and ghosts. You know Stephen King? He's a horror writer. Who is he? Whoa! Yes, this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shonomo, where we speak truth to power. And remember, we are the masters of Pan-Africanism on TV. Thanks so much to our sponsors. We appreciate you. We love you. And we need you to do more business with us. Now, the truth is only one. That's why they say the truth is an orphan. We speak the truth. So we have become orphans. But we are supporting the next generation and even this generation and more generations to come. Somebody asked me, Black Rasta, if you ever become president, what would be the first thing you will do? He expected to hear me say, I'll build hospitals, I'll build schools. He said, no, I'm building nothing. I will spend my tenure of office 
building the minds of the people. Nkrumah told us, now that we have independence, what we need is to change our attitude. The problem of Africa, Ghana inclusive, is attitudinal. Lack of patriotism. If you have patriotism, you wouldn't leave that hospital there to rot. If there was patriotism in GBC, ghost will not exist. Old, one million year old people will not be there and claim their 28 years. There are people in such institutions who have their grandchildren older than them. His grandchild, my brother, my sister, is 41. Yet he himself is 27. On paper, he can't see a fly without wearing his glasses. And the laces are as thick as the skin of the crocodile. My brother, my sister, what are you doing? At a certain point, you must slow down so that stronger hands will come. It's like a football game. When somebody is playing and you realize he's tired, in fact, the coach will pull you out and bring on fresh limbs. But in Ghana, we hate fresh limbs. We hate fresh limbs. We'll get deeper into this. Thank you so much. Take our numbers off the screen. Give us a call. It's a WhatsApp line and a regular line too. Send us a WhatsApp message or send us a free WhatsApp call. Let us see how we can support your business. Let's do business. Yes, let us be that live line to your staggering business. This is the Blackpot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Next thing I want to look at is entitled. Mm, 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 mm. Serena Williams defines black beauty. Look at her. Very pretty. She became the only woman in history to win a tennis championship whilst over seven weeks pregnant. When you watch her from the back, oh my God, you see some fresh melons dancing beautifully behind her anytime she jumps to fire the ball. A very beautiful woman. And when you look at her chest, it's like two full moons hugging each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, and this is published by the Indian Express. Be black and be proud. You don't let the world decide beauty. Bots are popular. Did you see that? Bots are popular. I'm, I am trying to lose mine. And people are trying to get mine. Hallelujah. Just yesterday we talked about bots, right? And the Nigerians have something interesting they say. They say, Nyash no get hano. But it will open door. Nyash, no get hand, but it's the open door. Nigeria say open. Hey, what are we talking about, brethren? You can be more talented than God. Nobody's interested in your talent. All you need to do is to get two injections, one here and one up. And when you are walking and you are shaking yourself, shake, hey, hey everybody wants you. They will make you a musician by force. It's not your music they want. It's the nyash now. But in the happen. Chai. Omonaja. The craze. <laughs> Watch it. It says, we change the game of tennis. Serena Williams, who is set to play in her last competitive tournament, the U.S. Open later tonight tells the Time magazine, we changed how people play, period. People never attacked. People never took balls early. People never served like this. People never had to play so hard to beat two black girls from Compton. The we is, of course, herself and her sister Venus Williams. Watch this. Serena's influence goes beyond the sweat and toil. Let's say no. Sweat and toil of tennis court. And she knows it. 
she sees her greatest legacy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, your amen is too weak. It's looking for my trouble. Hallelujah. Watch. She sees her greatest legacy as confidence and self-belief. And teaching black girls, they can do it too. Confidence and self-belief. And teaching other black kids, in particular black girls, they can do it. This is the part that kills me. This part kills me. They, you don't let the world decide beauty. And me being thicker or whatever. I mean caves are popular now. Bots are popular. I am trying to lose mine. And people are trying to get mine. Giving them that confidence. That motivation is something that has literally never been done. That's it away and follow me. Come along. Did you see that? Her greatest legacy is what? Self-confidence. And self-belief. A lot of these people who go for injections and they, they lack confidence. They believe nobody will see them if they don't artificialize some parts of their body. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. wrong. Right now, the biggest business in Ghana has moved from church business and politics to prostitution. A girl that I knew several years ago in school was slim like sugar cane. Today I meet her and she has caves like mommy water. What thing they happen? Big boobs, big back, slim waist, as if she has no intestines. And when you go out to eat, oh no, she'll just drink water and eat one little bit of achomo and that's it. She won't eat again. All because she is selling her factory. The factory is busy. Ah, Minister Nene. Hey, Serena Williams is telling you that she has self-confidence and self-belief. And for that matter, what people say, this is the in thing, she will lose it. And still be confident and walk up to you and tell you, say, yo, yeah, I am. Right now, doctors are making money with their dangerous injections. All women are looking the same now. The same shape. True? You go out, all of them look the same. I don't know if they taste the same though. But I know that a fattened chicken does not taste as the natural chicken. Even though I don't eat chicken. I'm speaking in parables though. So. I'm speaking in parables. My brother, my sister. Serena Williams has spoken. She's done it all in tennis. We've done their history on this show before. If you missed it, go back and watch in the interim. To all the ladies out there, please build the confidence in you. Don't let what you wear bring you that confidence. If that thing is not there, what happens? Don't let what you inject in yourself bring you that confidence. Else you are a drug addict. Some people will never be confident until they smoke or drink or inject something. And then they have that fool's paradise feeling. Dutch courage. After the effect is gone, then they become like chicken. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, boy, skip a job. <laughs>
My name is Waris. All of you know me as Comedian Waris. I come from a home where cleanliness is not only next to godliness, but a must. We seldom fell ill and we saved our doctor this headache. At an early age, my mother introduced us to our best gift ever, PJ's Acid Cleaner. PJ's Acid Cleaner kills 99% of all gems and keeps your WCs, marbles, tiles, and concrete floors sparkling new and clean. In fact, you don't need any extra muscle when it comes to PJ's Acid Cleaner. It has all the muscle. When my fiancé, Mamiya, first visited me, I almost lost her. She didn't believe I was single, lived alone, and without a house help. Yet my house had this great fragrance and was always clean. I had to reveal my secret. PJ's Acid Cleaner, my family's greatest gift. For bulk purchases. Please call 0244-624-526 or 0262-233-243. Abu's Abu's chapter. Hey, babe. Sister Paulina, we reading glasses here. Chini, I want more Hebrew. Hey, madam. Madam, when you see that that Hawaiian hair back capsule, a drawing thing, a pair of water semi, me ready. I mention glasses. Hmm. Oh, brody, best yet. See clear. Hey, no crow. See that that Hawaiian hair back capsules, a your full supplement for good vision, and not recommended for children below 12 years, asthmatic patients, pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. I draw you.
God is a Jamaican. Yes, I'm a Jamaican. I was born in a little parish, a beautiful little parish called Clarendon, outside of Kingston. Everybody knows Kingston, but Clarendon is where I come from. I am a singer. I am an author. I am a, um, a songwriter. I am a poetess, and I'm a, and I am an actress. Right? I do the whole. I've been doing it for many, many years. And so, um, basically, that's who I am. I'm uh, anything art, everything art. That's me. You think art, and you think Diana. Yeah. <laughs> I do reggae music, I do inspirational music, I do cultural music, I do um, gospel, if you call it gospel. You know, I do. I just do uplifting, clean music, even the 12 year old can listen to it. Or, you know, or if the adult, if you feel like it needs some motivation or so. The kind of music I do will really, you know, motivate you and that's basically what I do with reggae predominantly. Okay, so the inspiration behind Bed of Roses is this. I actually, you know, bad to bad, as we say in Jamaica, there's that little stigma that has always been going on that, you know, you know, men are, most men are not good men, and you don't really have good men, especially like if they're poor and they can't take care of you. Women have two hands and two feet too, so you know, crippled, you know, you don't necessarily need somebody to take care of you. What you need is a man with a good heart, who loves you and who will work to you so, with you so you can build an empire. So, Bed of Roses is really in the defense of men and so also to really rewrite the narrative that if a man is poor, he can't take care of that he's not good. It's not good for you, which is a lie. You understand? <laughs> so there are lots of men out there who don't have a lot of money, but they, you know, they are good and upright men. You know, they, they just want someone to work with them and someone to motivate them. And so that song was really, um, you know, to celebrate good men who don't necessarily have a lot of money. Nice little ranch, don't go a veggie where we plant, we not go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear more in our pantry? Give me a firm foundation when a Sunday. But of course, this is available to the public um, on our platform called 16 Bars Multimedia. So on the website, it will be the 16 B A R S M has in Mary, M has in Mary.com. So that is 16 Bars MM.com. I am available for live performances any day of the week. So you can contact me on, first of all, you can reach out to me on my Instagram as Empress Diana, and my Diana has two N's. So that's Empress, which is D-I-A-N-N-A. -N -N so that's Empress Diana, that's my IG. And um, also, you can also, you know, send me a, a, a link or something on our YouTube. Our YouTube is the same name of our website, 16 Bars Multimedia. We have lots of um, work there. Uh, you can reach us there, and also you can um, you can reach us at 16 bars mm at outlook.com. So that is 16. This time it's the word that all spelled out. 16 bars mm at outlook.com. And if you choose when you go on our website, which is the same 16 bars mm dot com, um, you can go to the contact page and send us um, a, a message. And usually we respond within a couple of hours. All right. Um, so that's basically it. And I'm sure at the end of um, this, you you will have a number somewhere to contact us. All right. So that's that's it. That's what I do. And you know, keep the music locked. <laughs> yes, I bless. Sorry, sorry. Oh, Doc, yes, I want to know why you did. Who knows why she 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 Malake, 
Tina Tet Malake, Ayama will be a wenya malaria fever. And a Tina Tet Tomac Mesha, Ayama will be a wenya indigestion. Yes, she moves when you malaria and sign a waffle a dream. Not recommended for children below 12 years. Pregnant or lactating mothers should consult a doctor. Boah! Skip a judge. Blackboard. Coco Show. This is the Blackpot, aka Koko Shonuma. Thanks so much to our sponsors, PJ's Acid Cleaner. Ah, number one in the whole wide continent of Africa. Yes, two drops in your WC, wait for five minutes, flush, and it's brand new. 99.99% of all gems killed. Thank you so much to Chick Luxury Beauty Home. That's where all the beautiful ladies are coming from. Hey, they do pem cutting, they have wigs, they have braids, and they also deal with massage and natural twist and locks. Ah look beautiful some people don't look that beautiful because they've not gone to check luxury beauty home check their contacts call them up hit them up they're right here in accra a drink on a road around the asafache aquaba link you'll find them we also are thankful to tina Ted natural health center the house of quality about medicines hey anything you want is it malaria typhoid fever join this or you want gaga ni gaga or slow kai dodo kai fuka fuka dodo kai Shake it down, uh -uh. Go get it. It's 230. Till I 230 capsules. Yes. And if you're a woman and you need your team to be tight, very, very tight, so that when the man comes in, he won't find his way out. You must go get a Tina Ted Venike. Pick up the numbers on the screen and hit at them. Pam. And everything is everything. Hey, Diana King. Did I say Diana King? Diana Wright. Ah. Diana Wright. Beautiful woman. Look at her. Bed of Roses. Her music is out. It's on YouTube. Hit at her. Her number is here. Book her on great concerts. She was in Ghana. Played at the Eric Donaldson concert. And her. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Singing, singing, singing. Nines, nines, nines. <laughs> All right. So my name is Black Cross. And I want to say thank you so much for coming along. I appreciate you. I love you. The next thing we want to look at very quickly. Hey. Watch it. What is he saying? Strange white elephant occupies council of state building for six years. Hey! Me, the only elephant I know in Ghana is the MPP. So what is this white elephant? Watch. Council of states, 4.5 million Ghana city office building has been a white elephant for six years. And this is the Auditor General talking. And when you read it, it says, Auditor General has said in his 2021 report that an office building put up for the Council of State at a cost of $4,599,72 uh, 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 Ghana cities, million Ghana cities, has remained unused for the past six years. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Oh, what is this? Read the story. Forget all the acts and come to the second paragraph. It says, however, the report said, we noted that controls over the management and utilization of office buildings at the council were not satisfactory. We observed that the council constructed an office building near Parliament House, Accra, at a cost of 4.59772 million. The report noted. This is the Auditor General. Council of State. That's where La Bianca is. Madame La Bianca. Members can twist the hands of tax authorities and swindle Ghanaians so they can get rich. Why did they put up the building? They knew they were not ready. The building got completed six years ago. And a white elephant is living in it. Are we okay? So you see, now when you do something for the likes, when you do something for populism, when you do something for tokenism, that is what happens. You only did it because you wanted to go and cut the tape, sing the national anthem and go away and say you are accomplished. Fire will burn all of you wicked people. That's what politicians do. They don't look at the priority of the people. They are only looking at their bloated egos. You built it near the parliament house. 
People go to the parliament house day and night and they see that building, yet nobody says, oh, ah, but what is happening? But this is a stupid country where ambulances can be imported. And only when they arrive, we realize that, oh, the ambulance should have had this, should have had that. It cannot serve as an ambulance. We can only use it as throttle. And because we did not import it for the use of throttle, it will sit in the courtyard of the parliament house and enjoy the vagaries of the weather and get deteriorated. Minister Nene, why? And you think these people are okay? I'm glad that matter is in court. But we know our judiciary system. The judiciary is sick. Our judiciary is sick. The judicial system, my brother, my sister, needs an overhauling. As President Mahama, ex-President Mahama said, he himself, another corrupt president who just went away. Mahama's greatest opportunity is for him to return into power and deal with the shortcomings of his dirty government in the past. Because Nana Akufuado's government is demonic. But Dufour is there. And here is doing Kululu left, right, and center. Ahunto, you go and donate for them to clap, yet you have not paid your workers at Star FM, EIB, and these people. Such hypocrites. You have money to go and give to Ahunto. You are buying computers and things and giving to people for them to clap for you. You want to be president. Your face like that. Look at them. I just don't like these people's hypocrisy. Dufour, your workers are EIB. They have not been paid. Some of them 17 months. You have money for Ahunta. Or be here Ahunta at EIB for. EIB has become a ghost house. People have run away from the media house. Bolare says, when people come into his office, he just says, I know you are here for two things. Number one, to say good morning. And the next thing is to give me your resignation letter. As for the good morning, I have responded already. Just give me your letter. And the person will say, oh, boss. Oh, boss. And truly pull out the letter and say, boss, you know, be me. Oh. What hypocrisy is that? You have money to go and give to people. Yet you have no money to pay your workers, people who have worked. Ahunto, indeed. When we work with Nam One, 17 months, no salary. If we had heard Nam One was doing Ahunto, you would have seen what we would have done to Nam One. We are giving money out and giving things to people in the name of Ahunto. Yet your people have not been paid for 17 months. Nam One was going through a serious predicament. Just like you, you too. But you have been able to make money to fuel your political ego. But the people who are breaking their backs for you, some of them are here 17 months, no pay. They are now working like caricatures. Dash it away. And follow me. Last thing I need to talk about before I go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your amen is sick and is looking for my trouble. Hallelujah. Hospitals join the race for supremacy in corruption. Now it's all about who is more corrupt. Charlie, I cheat past you. I make money past you. Look at this. Over 240 million Ghana cities collected by 11 health institutions missing. Auditor General Disc. Why? The other day, Takrade Hospital. Listen to Listen to this story. Takradi Hospital. A woman carried her husband. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's get the story right. In fact, a man carried his wife. In fact, there was a carry. Just like there was a swallow in the case of Jonah. Whether it was Jonah who swallowed the whale or the whale swallowed Jonah, there was a swallow. In the Takradi issue, the man carried his wife to the hospital and the doctors were tired in fact there was one doctor on duty and that day I was told 
so many accident victims. There was an accident on the road that they carried all the people there. So the doctor was exhausted. And they brought this woman there. The doctor only came and looked at the person. Remember the ratio of doctor and patient was one is to 1,200. Imagine one doctor seeing 1,200 people. At the end of the day, how is he going to look like? He himself will be a patient. I salute you, doctors. Yet the president does not respect you, doctors. He flies out to treat his Qatar and malaria. Finance minister doesn't respect you. He flies out to treat his puffy face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me now. Hear. The man carried the wife to the hospital. When the doctor came and looked at the woman, Open the eye like this. You know how the doctors normally do, do this? Close, open. Close, open, close, open, close, open. He said, take, him to the take her to the mortuary. She's dead. And it was a Muslim family. So the man started, Subhan Allah! Well, I'm the lie! Subhan Allah! Well, I'm the lie! Allah! Hey, 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 please. I ain't did it. Go out. When she, he went out, the family members started gathering. The doctors came out and said, please go. So they went out, prepared the whole family, invited the chief imam to send a representative. They were going to the hospital. Early morning, they decided to go to the hospital. This time around, they were walking to the hospital so they could create the right attention. Subhan Allah! Well, Alhamdulillah! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar Allah Alhamdu Subhanallah And when they do it It's like a duty For all Muslims Muslims will start Once they hear that they will be joining Before they reach the hospital They numbered about 10,000 The group that started 20 10,000 they were at the hospital Takradi hospital The European hospital When they arrived there They thought it was going to be a demonstration So we are coming for our dead body. They had already brought the coffin. Imam was ready to say Janaza prayers. Not knowing, as the man went home, that night the mortuary man who was asked to come and go and put the woman in the mortuary, carried the woman, was going to take the woman, and then put the woman on the bed, and remove the clothes, everything. You know, they stripped them naked. Removed everything, and decided to go and wear his gloves. When he came, the woman was sitting on the person. Are they my idea? My idea. Hey! Mochi man closed the thing and ran out. Drank gallows of appetite. Got the courage and came. Maba. My idea. Look, she was naked. Are they? Hey! And the matter was all over in the news. What did the doctors there say? They didn't want to talk. Somebody told me, oh, there's something called the Lazarus effect. Hallelujah. Come. One of the doctors there told me, there's something called the Lazarus effect. Somebody might look like is dead. They might even die. But they can resurrect. Hallelujah. 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 My brother. If doctors are so inundated with patients and the hospitals are this corrupt, they are not getting their right salaries. Nurses are running out because of poor conditions of service. Yet some people are fattening out of corruption. Then it's sad. Look at the report. They've mentioned a number of hospitals. Look at them. The institutions as listed by the Auditor General's Office in this 2021 audit report include, watch, Pantai Hospital. If any hospital will be corrupt, it shouldn't be Pantai. You know why? Because over there, the mentally unstable people go there. Corrupt. Pantai Nurses Training School. Accra Public Health Nurses School. Anyaman Health Center. And the Upper West Regional Health Directorate. And the rest are that they are so government hospital. If anything at all, a village hospital should not be corrupt. But look, they've all learnt. The Boise Health Directorate. 
Wasa Government Hospital, Efiam Quanta Regional Hospital. You know where Efiam Quanta is? It's in Takrade there. Bupe Polyclinic and Nyakrom Health Center. A lot of them are village hospitals. Supervisors don't go there. So they have a field day to loot. Shame on you. Oh, shame on you. It's a haunt. Shame. Corrupt people. You have no beds. People come, they lie on the floor. Yet you have money to steal. Yet you go to church on Sunday. Friday, you are the mosque claiming to be the reincarnate of whoever. To God be the glory. Well, my name is Black Rust, and I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you. Is that the last story? All right. Well, that's what it is, my brother, my sister. And I want to say thank you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My producer says, look at the next story. One more story and we are done. Jesus. Watch this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see why he said I should hold on. Look at this pastor. Do you know his name? Pastor Reverend Boache. He said, help me pay for my higher purchase white car. I will tell God to give you one. He can go to God and pray to God to give you a car. But as for him, you have to give him money to buy his car. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. During the, during the Sunday, August 21, 22 church service, Reverend Boachi, who now preaches to his congregation virtually from a remote location, asked members of his church to help him pay for a new car he has acquired on higher purchase. According to him, the car he has purchased was one that was shown to him in his vision as the car he is supposed to return to church with. It means without that car, he's not coming to church. My father, God, came for me from this house I am currently in and brought me to church in a white car. What it means is that he's done with me here. And I will soon be returning. So I have searched for the white car. And I have found a particular car. I have acquired it on higher pages. He told his congregation. He called on the members. To contribute to the payment of the car. While assuring that. He will beseech God. To bless those who contribute. With their own cars. It means. Oh. I found a car. I saw it in a vision. God put me in a white car. I found a white car. Church, pay for it. And those of you who need cars, I'll pray for you to get a car. So if you saw God in a vision and he gave you a car, why don't you ask God in the same vision, in prayer, to give you that car? You want your church members to give you the car, so you would rather pray for them. These are the people who make faith so cheap. These are the people who have no respect for God. These are the people who make people run away from Christianity and they are doing other things. If he had even said, God came to me in a vision and asked me to ask the church to get me a car. It would have been different. Or, I saw myself in a white car and God took me to the church. Fortunately, I found a white car. I'm trying to pay. Church members who can help me pay for that car I will be excited. It's voluntary. But pay for it. I will pray for you to get yours. It's ridiculous. So what is the heading? What are we talking about? Watch it. Watch. Watch. Pastor leads his sheep to the pasture. Eh? Church members are supposed to be sheep, right? And in our parlance, the sheep is sheep is following, going anywhere. But the goat, hey, a pochi break, hey, a danger. A rabbit sheep will go. So the sheep is leading them to the pasture. From the pasture to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I'm going. I appreciate you. I thank you. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power.
We normally don't criticize. But if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. Today we decide to look at the Auditor General's report. And that's it. We've been live on Pan-African TV, live on Loud Silence TV, live on Ghana Web TV, and live on Black Empire TV. On our YouTube page, try to subscribe and hit at us. It's Black Empire Media, as you can see on your screen. My brother, my sister, my name is Black Rasta, and I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you. Whoa!